Going for a quick break here, but when we come back, we take a look at the issue. Where are the big bucks in the Asia-Pacific job market? All the answers right after this break. Welcome back to the program. The war for talent is well and truly here. Salaries are predicted to rise by 8% or more in the coming year. Well, integrated communication and marketing professionals are now in high demand. There's also a significant shift from the traditional towards new media like the internet, multimedia and experiential marketing. And this morning we'll find out what the job prospects are in the marketing, communications and creative sectors in the Asia-Pacific region. To tell us who is earning the big bucks and what positions in these fields hold the best promotions are two industry experts in the studio with us this morning. Stephen Pang, Regional Director of Asia, Aquint, and James Co, Director at Aquint, Singapore. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So give us the good news. Who's earning the big bucks? Where are all the money in the market? Well, the, um, the, the people that are making the, the big dollars are, are people that have very specialized skills, uh, integrated marketing skills. That, as you, there's a big demand for that um, because th there is such a... Uh, well, I, I guess marketing is changing now. We have uh, new um, marketing techniques like podcasts and blogs mm -hmm. and so forth. So, um, a, a, new, a creative director yep. in, in advertising? I guess if you look at, at salaries, like they've been increasing for the past three years. Uh, and at Aquin, what we're seeing right now is with integration, creative directors, even in advertising agencies and branding, or even in PR, uh, everyone's looking for integrated skill sets. And three years ago where the boom, like in the internet boom, kind of like went bust, mm -hmm. uh, everybody went back to their old jobs. So right now what we're having is completely very few people, very talented in that space. Mm -hmm. So obviously. Uh -huh. So when you say integrated skill sets, what's the ideal candidate? What kind of skill set should that person have? An integrated skill set predominantly for a communication specialist would be someone that understands really through the line and it's not just about the big idea. So it's about interactive, it is about CRM, events, sponsorship, sales promotion, above the line, below the line, and all of that and how that kind of like integrates into one. So let's talk about numbers now. How yep. much do these people actually really earn? Um, from a Singapore perspective, I mean, we've seen salaries go go going up for the past two years. Uh, last year or this year, uh, the median range for a creative director would be about 180000 mm -hmm. um, That's look, in Sing dollars. That's in Sing dollars. Uh, but what we're predicting in the year ahead is, uh, given the demand, we're looking at the median going up to about 200,000. So that's about a 13% increase. Right. How yeah. does that compare to other Asian markets in the region? Well, um, if you look at markets like uh, Malaysia, for instance, um, the, the, the dollar figure salary range is about the same, except it's paid in ringgits instead of Singapore dollars. Um, in, in Hong Kong, um, it's such a dynamic market. Yeah, it goes up and down. And right now, the cost of living have, have gone quite... Um, quite high. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're looking at, at a 20-25% premium um, compared to Singapore salaries for Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But explain to us uh, what is bringing about um, this increase in, in salaries? I guess one is the war for talent. Um, one would be the economic situation has gone up. All our clients that we have surveyed, and we've surveyed over 5,000 people across Asia Pacific, all of them predicting bullish economies. Mm -hmm. um, so that one given two is skill set integrated it's not there um, Singapore or I'll talk it from a Singapore perspective and there, there really is very few people and we used to import people so from the UK and from Australia and stuff uh -huh. so um, we find that right in the survey done did anything catch you by surprise about the current market and where it's heading um, no, no, the, the, no major surprises. Basically, mm -hmm. because all the economies in, in Asia are doing well and they're all predicting very bullish. It's um, just a place to be in Asia. That's right yes. <laughs> and that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a good time uh, in Asia right now. And, uh -huh. uh, and as part of the, that previous question about um, salary increases, one of the reasons why is there's a lot of talent migration as well. Mm -hmm. You know, people mm -hmm. moving from Singapore, Malaysia to North Asia, China, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and people moving from India to Southeast Asia. So that's kind of driving up the, um, the, the cost and salaries. But a lot of people in the creative fields, they also work freelance, don't they? Mm -hmm. So how does that uh, factor into the equation? Mm. Freelance, 
like you say when you say creative that tends to be more like in art directors copywriters and stuff like that mm -hmm. that factors in during stopgap measures so when creative when they have pictures and stuff but that has been the norm in the creative industries I think what's more important is we're seeing freelance taking off slightly in account management and in marketing positions um, although a bit slower this um, it's getting up there mm -hmm. um, but how it factors in and I guess for a business perspective um, business cycles go up and down you know right. and what we're trying to do is to try and even it out with freelance talent but what's happening in the Singapore market is freelance or temple contract is always seen as you can't get a permanent job so you do freelance right mm -hmm. but in actuality it's you have to be a lot better to do freelance does that mean you'll be more I mean is that a more lucrative market it's lucrative if the person stays in it mm -hmm. and is good at it um, but a lot of times what we're facing in Equin is the talent that we're putting it is in between jobs so they're actually looking for full-time jobs mm -hmm. um, so once you know they'll do freelance and then they'll try and convert to full-time but so is this a, prefer a preferred arrangement and also how does this uh, help one's career in the long term I mean you tell people you work freelance you know, and then they're like, oh, they've got that's this. A negative. Yeah, negative yeah. That's a negative. That's a negative stigma yeah. for it right now because I think if you look at the, the, the Asian market for freelancing and contracting, it's not as mature as some markets like in Australia or, or um, America where, you know, it, that's, that's a preferred choice for a lot mm. of people um, in the way they work. And it depends on, on what you mean by long term career goals because for, for some people, it's not about climbing the corporate ladder or making a, a ton of money. It's having the choice of a life, lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, having the, the choice to choose projects they want to work on, mm -hmm. um, and um, work when they want to and take time off when they want to. So I think um, if you look at markets like Australia, where, where it's more of a mature freelance contracting market, um, there are a lot of advantages for being freelance, uh, mm -hmm. for being a freelancer. You know, you have better tax advantages, uh, you have better choice of projects, uh, mm -hmm. and people, you know, it's not a cultural mm -hmm. stigma as well. Mm -hmm. I think Asia is becoming that way. Right. So mm. you say Asia is the place to be. Which part of Asia would you say, um, you know, we should pay attention to closely when it comes to jobs, you know, who's hiring who? Right. Uh, obviously China is, is uh, what, we, what we call China is the, uh, is the black hole of, for talent because it's, it's such a strong gravi gravitational pool for people uh -huh. to go to the Chinese market because it's so big and, and so dynamic. For compensation there? Um, for, if, if you're, if you're an uh, a non-local Chinese and or a returning Chinese going back there, the packages are very good. I mean, um, a lot of companies are, are throwing allowances, accommodation allowances, mm -hmm. and uh, educational allowances, car drivers. And which industries? Um, in, in the industries that we're talking about, marketing. advertising, marketing, uh -huh. creative uh, sort of okay. industries. Yeah. So apart from what you've mentioned, are there other things that employers are doing to help retain these people? Because talent's so hard to come by. Mm. Absolutely. I think uh, talent retention is one of the, the key agendas for most companies now because, uh, because everybody is looking for the top talent. Mm -hmm. um, so w during our, our survey, the Orange Book survey, a lot of employers are, are spending a lot more money on, on training their employees, uh, hoping to retain them. Um, different markets have different um, strategies. In Japan, for instance, uh, one, of the top, um, one of the top retention strategies is to pay for their mobile phone and give them mobile phones, which uh -huh. is a big attraction for them. Uh, but in, in certainly in Southeast Asia, uh, it's it's more training and and bonuses. All right. Wow, okay. okay. All right. I mean, that's always welcome. Thank you that's so much right. for coming in this Thank morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Our guests this morning: Stephen Pang and James Ko from Aquant on the job prospects and perks and the marketing, communications, and creative business.